as the seafloor has moved over the continental margin, the rocks immediately underneath become really rather badly messed up. The light-colored brittle uh, sandy layers, which originally were layers, break up and roll around in big chunks in the soft, less competent shaley rock. We're now in the heart of the Appalachian Mountains, or what was the Appalachian Mountain Range, where two continental margins came together. Rocks caught between these margins were subjected to terrible pressures, as if caught in a vice between these two crunching continental margins. The contortions and folds in the rocks really are evidence for the pressures that they have been subjected to. Now these rocks are the very ones that we saw at Green Point. We see here folds, contortions, quartz sweats, quartz being sweated out of the rocks during the folding, which are really miniatures of major broad structures which occur in this region. The seafloor also becomes involved in this deformation and becomes sheared and altered to give a rock with a peculiar blocky structure. It has been said that early man carved these blocks from the rock. In fact, the rock is a soapstone and early man may have modified it by emphasizing its natural blocky structure. So we may have soapstone carving done by man and by nature. happens as this process continues? Well, as the continents get close to each other, things become more complicated. Instead of one sinking slab, there may be two or three, and they may move into the Earth's crust in different directions. They melt, so volcanism continues spasmodically, but as they sink into the crust, heat is generated, rock is melted, and molten material moves towards surface and crystallizes, thereby thickening the crust from below. When the continents actually collide, they intermesh or pile up on each other or under each other, forming a very thick crust. Sediments in the collision area become folded and are thrown into mountains, much like the Himalayan mountains.
It's important to remember, I think, that these Earth movements take place very slowly, not rapidly at all. Things creep imperceptibly at the rate of a few centimeters a year, or less than 100 feet per century. So we need time, and do we have it? Well, in Earth history, we're dealing with a planet that's 4,500 million years old. Now, that's a lot of time. And we sort of have to reset the clocks in our minds to that time frame so that years become thousands of years, centuries become millions of years. That is a time frame we have to think in. So there is time for continents to creep imperceptibly together, for oceans to shrink or expand, for ocean floors to be moved up onto the continental margins for continents to collide and throw up great mountain ranges. We have the time, but the process takes millions of years. This Earth simply was not built in six days, and it never rests on the seventh, always moving. Now, if we have a problem with time and think in terms of hours and days, we may question the whole process. Continents moving around, bumping into each other, ocean floor being moved up onto land surfaces, continents colliding and throwing up mountain ranges. Sort of sounds like science fiction. And yet, that orange slab of rock there on top of Table Mountain moved 50 miles from its original position to where you see it now. Now, how else do you explain that kind of phenomenon?